So the whole economics was a black economics, illicit. The friends agreed in Germany, and then we launched the first ever voluntary social labeling system in Indian, Pakistani, and Nepalese carpet industry. And that is known as, as Good Weave now. As a result of this, this initiative, let me tell you the concrete result was that according to, as, as I said yesterday, the US Department of Labor did a study some years ago, about 12, 13 years ago, or 15 maybe, I can't recall exact year. Over a million children, one million children were working in Indian, Pakistan, and Nepalese carpet industry. But in 10 years' time, it has decreased to hardly 300,000. And now the latest reports, not from the same source, but from other sources, is that the number is no more than 200,000 in entire South Asia. And that also includes Afghanistan, which was not included before. So the number might be lesser now. One million children were working 15 years ago or 16 years ago. Now the number is less than 200,000. It worked. We were able to found, find solution not only to carpet industry, but other industries like chocolate and garment and shoes, apparels. They started using this some sort of monitoring system and uh, certification system. It worked. So instead of fighting with just one uh, set of policemen, my anger uh, was for something else, and I, I, I used it. And the second interesting example, in very short, some parents, especially the mothers, came all the way from Nepal in search of their daughters in Delhi, in India. Again through some source, they came to know about Bachpan Bachao Andolan, my organization, or about me. So I had a long discussion with them. They said that their daughters have been working in an industry called Great India Circus. Uh, so we tried to find out where the Great India Circus was. I think it was Great India, I'm not sure. Great India or New India, something like that. And that circus, was not in India. With a lot of research, we discovered that this circus, all the circuses, not this, many of these circuses keep on changing their names to make these people fool. So the name of the circus became New Roman Circus from Great India Circus. And then we discovered that this New Roman Circus is owned by a very strong mafia who is smuggler of firearms, small firearms from Nepal, the Chinese assault rifles and other things are illegally smuggled, and drugs and girls for prostitution and also for these kind of things. So I decided myself that I will go and rescue them. It was a very, very risky operation. And in my whole uh, 30, 35 years of experience, when there's the most dangerous, most risky situation, sometimes uh, informing my people and sometimes without informing, I, I go there. And in this case, they didn't know that I will be going, but I went there and they found me on the, the front row to rescue, in the rescue operation. Because I lost two of my colleagues. One was shot dead, one was beaten to death. And I had no answer to their young children, their mothers. They sacrificed their life. And I always put myself in their place that I should go if it, ha it, it, is, it is bound to happen, that let it happen with me. So that was the most dangerous operation in uh, a place called Gonda in Uttar Pradesh some years ago. As we knew, the local police, magistrate, everybody was connived with them. They were hand in gloves. We were taken inside the circus. It's like a fortress. Uh, Hundreds of people work there. It's a moving uh, village with several hundred artists and managers and so on. So we did not find any girl. The tip-off has been given by the police, so the girls would disappear. 
Then this man came and suddenly became angry on me and he said that how you dare to enter, it's illegal. You have encroached our property and we are registering a case against you. So the magistrate who was with us agreed that yes, Mr. Satyarthi, uh, you cannot come here without permission. I said, I made a complaint to you and you are here. What, what permission? You are magistrate. The police is with us. But he said, oh, let me think. And suddenly this guy, the circus owner, he took out his gun and it put on my neck. It's a matter of fraction of seconds. Fraction of seconds, let me tell you. Everybody noticed that there was a camera, as this camera is running. The camera was running in my backside. And the police officer warned this guy that, what are you doing? You are creating uh, uh, no evidences. You are, if you uh, shoot him now, then the camera is running. And luckily, that was a live camera. This Aaj Tak TV, the Hindi one. So everything was going on live, including this conversation. And then, uh, this man was very furious, very angry. He said, okay, okay. But he ordered his man to kill me in front of camera. So the people started beating me with iron rods. Whatever uh, could come in their hands, they, they did it and they, they hit me. And all those mothers. And my son was also accompanying me that day. He just passed out as a very bright lawyer. He's a very bright lawyer now. But I requested him because it was a complicated case because the girls belong to Nepal and it's an international issue. So I requested him that he can help me with some legal things. So he went in the first rescue operation together with two of his colleagues. They have also identified my son. And they hit both of us deliberately and the, the parents. Five of us lied down. My son tried to save me because I was hit on my head. My leg was broken. I could not walk properly. And then he was hit badly, and he got serious injuries in his backbone. His uh, lumbar two and lumbar three had badly hurt. So he was also lying in blood. So the bypassers later on took us to hospital. By that time, we were not clear. In the beginning, we saw each other. We spoke to each other one sentence. And I asked my son in hospital when we were a little bit conscious, I said that, Beta, tum ho, jinda ho. Are you still alive? He said, yeah, I'm alive. And you are alive because you are able to ask this question to me. So both of us are alive. Many people thought that Kailas Satyarthi perhaps will give up this idea. It's very rare. Rarest of the rare in the history I have never seen, never read. That a son and a father were lying on the street, almost dying, in rescuing and protecting the children of other country, Nepalese children. But I was very proud. I could not give up, and neither my son. We were able to rescue those children after a while, because we were in hospital, and in hospital, doctors thought that it's, it's quite a serious thing. I, I had a heavy blood loss, but I announced there, that I am not going to eat anything, I will sit on hunger fast, until unless all these girls are restored. A big shock for doctors and everyone, friends. But I sat on hunger fast for six days. It was not because the strength came from my body. My body was uh, broken and bleeding, injured everywhere with bandage. And I always believe that they can break my leg, they can break my head, they cannot break my soul. They cannot kill me. They can kill my body, but nobody can kill me. So High Court has taken note of it, and High Court has passed an order to restore all the children in a couple of days. The order was passed individually to the district, uh, no, to the uh, director general of police, personally. He had to report back that how these girls were found, where they were found. 
Finally, the girls were found. And one of those girls, after freeing, we took them to Delhi and so on. She hated man. She does not want to talk to a man. She did not uh, conveniently gave her statement to the police because the policeman was man and the magistrate was also a man. And her evidence, her witness was very important because she has been multiply raped several times. She was about 13-year-old girl. But when she was rescued and they, a lady journalist asked her that, as usual, but how you feel? And the girl replied, you will die one day. And I have died a thousand times. And you are asking this question, what I am feeling now? I don't want to see a man, she said. So I was a little bit cautious. When I was talking to other girls in my ashram in Delhi, Mukti Ashram, they were joyous, happy. That girl was not. She was sitting at a distance, almost closing her eye. I don't know what happened. I felt that somebody is coming, some shadow is coming closer to me. I did not deliberately look at her. She slowly walked down and sat beside me. And then I felt something which I cannot explain. She put her uh, hand on my shoulder and she asked, you are saying that we will go to school, we are free children, but I am no more a child. I am no more a child. Then I put my hand on her shoulder and said, no, you are still a child, my daughter. Then she jumped. You said me daughter? I said, yes, you are my daughter. And she hugged me. She started crying. And she did not stop for a while. Everybody was in tears. And the girl kept on crying. Her childhood has come back. I was angry. I was angry to those employers who did this thing to her. But instead of fighting, I was not, of course, I was beaten up. My son was beaten up. But I was more angry because all these girls had this hail. I decided not to get indulged and waste my time and energy. And believe me, I, I, I have very limited manpower. I have very limited resources, even now. So I decided that let us go to the Supreme Court of India with all the evidences, all the things, and request and appeal the Supreme Court that this is so inhuman. We must do something. Supreme Court, we requested that please pass an order to ban employment of children in all circus industry in India. It took six years, six and a half years. We kept on arguing in the court. And eventually, some years ago, I think three years ago, in 2012, the Supreme Court has outlawed employment of children up to the age of 18 in circus industry completely. In India, nobody can employ young boys and girls in circuses in the name of artists. They are not artists. They are all victims of slavery. We got the judgment, and now it has become a law, the part of law. We have solved the problem. We could not solve the problem out of that anger if we are really revengeful to that one employer. I tried to do it.